else do? It's Christy with Kinder Ramblings. Long time no see. I'm not sure what number of video this is, but uh, I can tell you I've pressed stop about four times because they were making noise in the living room or my husband stuck his head in. And this time, there's no telling what you might see back here, but I'm gonna keep right on going. Um, it is almost May. Today is the day before, the last day of April. And this is, um, May is one of the busiest months for me because we have like, I have almost something on the calendar every day. Winding down the school year, we have a bunch of meetings and just getting all that stuff for the end of the year. And so last year, I thought there is no way I could participate in mania because mania, May is mania for me without adding in cross stitch um, to the mix and having a deadline for myself. But I was actually on one of the, I think I was on the Mania Facebook group, and there was a girl there that mentioned that she made a Mania book, um, a way to keep track of your Mania starts. And so I thought, you know, I could do this this year. Um, the book was like $12.99, and I ordered it. She actually um, published it through Amazon, so I ordered it, and it came, and this is what it looks like. It was written or put together by Jody Keach Smith. And it has room every page for a picture of your pattern. The pattern, of course, the pattern title, um, the floss you use, the fabric you used, and then the start date and the finish date. And so I thought that was a pretty cool way to keep track of um, when I actually started and later on down the road when I finally finish. So it's got pretty pretty it's big enough for all 31 if you choose to do 31 or however you want to keep track but I thought that was a pretty cool little book that she put together and I'm not sure if it's too late for some people to order but there's the ISBN number she doesn't know me or know anything about me um, but I thought that was kind of cute and of course you could keep track on on paper or your own journal but I just thought why not have a little place that I can keep my mania starts so this is so far out of my comfort zone because usually I have maybe one or two bigger projects ongoing whips that I'm working on and then a lot of littler things throughout that I can finish and then put away until I decide how I'm going to FFO it or go ahead and FFO it if I have plans. And so I'm a type A, totally anal person. And so this is going to push me to another level. Um, but I'm gonna try to do it and I'm putting it out here in public so that maybe whenever I touch base again, that I can say that I actually did fulfill the goal of having 31 new starts for the month of May, every day in May. Um, there's some big things in here. So I'm gonna try to have my smaller projects throughout the week when I don't have a lot of time and then the bigger projects on Friday night, Saturday and Sunday so that I can actually put more stitches in because I'll feel more like I've actually done something toward meeting my goal if I have more stitches in. And I'm saving the best for last. So on May 31st, I have a plan to start a Quaker Christmas. So I have it in my cool little project bag. And I actually was gifted this pattern from Cindy C. Stitches and she's amazing. But I did buy, I bought the fabric I bought all of the called for classic color works um, floss. I'm gonna have the pattern in here, so I'm ready. So this one's gonna start, this is gonna be the very last day of May, May 31st start a Quaker Christmas, and we will actually be out of town. We're going um, to Disney World, surprise, uh, at the very last part of May after the kids leave for the summer. Um, we have two teacher work days, and so I will be gone. Um, a little bit after Memorial Day. So I'll have some starts to start in Disney World. So I'm gonna keep to my plan and have a start every day. And then next year, I'm sure that I will probably, just my hair sticking up, I'll probably decide this drove me crazy and go back to another way. There's a whole lot of ways to do mania, more than one way. More than one way to skin a cat, more than one way to do mania. Um, so I'll talk some more about some of these things in this stack in a little bit, but I have some FFOs that I can't wait to share. I've shared some of them on Instagram, um, some of them I haven't. The first FFO is, oh, well first of all, 
remember if you've seen my video or Instagram, you know I did the Land I Love heart and hand pattern. And I put it on a threshold wooden bowl from Target. Set it upside down, just like this. This is the actually the dip bowl, threshold dip bowl. And inside I did the inner circle is kind of the lip to hold it onto the bowl. So this one I've already done. You've seen that one if you've watched my videos. But the next one that I completed was Bluebird's Nest. And this Bluebird's Nest has a one little button egg. Can y'all see? I'm so sorry, the light is. Hopefully this video, you can see it. And then this is my take on Bluebird's Nest. I decided to put three, change this light out a little bit, see how. Hello, I'm in, there we go, is that better or worse? Ah, it's the light from the black, hello, there we are. Okay, maybe, mm. let me see. Hello blind, the light keeps going, there we go. Okay, so this is Bluebird right here and I did three little eggs in her or his nest. Um, and then I put, finished it with pink rickrack around the edges. And then as the inner circle to hold it onto the bowl, I just used this cute little pink dotted fabric. So it sits on the bowl like this. Bluebird's Nest. Adorable. Then, secondly, I finished Holly Jolly Holiday. I just love these. They're quick, they're, well, they're quick and they're so cute. Now she finished hers with a snowflake charm and I actually did have a snowflake charm, um, but I decided to go a different route. Instead of the red trim around the edge, I went with the green, I had some green trim instead of having to go to the store. And then instead of the snowflake, I just finished it with this little Mary um, ornament. It was actually a wine bottle hanger, but, and so it looks like this. Sorry. So that is a finish. <laughs> Oops. Anyway, on the outer part, I have the black and white checked, little checked um, fabric that I decided to use. So this is what that looks like off of the bowl. Here's what it looks like on the bowl. Oops, there we go. That's what it looks like. So Mary. Adorable. Okay. Next. I know I got a lot done. I have a finish. I finally finished the Tis the Season Sal. It uh, took me six months, I think. But here it is. And I've got two choices. I think I may pay to have this one framed or I've never really had, I've never paid to have anything framed before. Um, or I may make a pillow out of it. I can't decide what I want to do. I mean, I can make my own pillow, but I cannot frame this big thing and make it and do it justice. So this is Tis the Season Sal, or Tis the Season, and I made it, I was a part of the Sal, but sadly, I would just finished it. And then I finished A Little Look by Lizzie Kate. Here we go. And here's mine. I started this on St. Patrick's Day, so it would be ready for next St. Patrick's Day. A Little Look by Lizzie Kate. Okay. I think that's all of my finishes, which is pretty good, I think. I'm gonna need some finishes because I'm not gonna get any of these finished, I don't think, and I'm gonna be, it's gonna be hard not actually having something finished. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna be, it's gonna be stressful, but I, you know, we gotta step out of our comfort zone every now and then, and this is stepping out of mine. I have a whip, actually three of them, two you've seen before, one you have not, I have Halloween time, and I did get the clock, the Tim Holtz clock to finish it. And I 
have started. The only thing that I have left to do are the um, numbers on the clock. So let me turn this around. Maybe you can see. Here we go. This is actually 30 Count Weeks Diet Works Grasshopper Linen. And this right here is very fancy. I don't know what color this is. Metallic cord. But that's the numbers are having a shimmer to them. So the numbers around the clock are going to be with Krennic. So that I'm almost finished with. I want to try to get that finished tonight and tomorrow so that I can put that away and be done before mania starts. Then I'm still working on Charles Wysocki Victorian Shops. I've done a little bit since the last time. Um, I finished the coach and I started on this left side. There's a cat hair. Great. Are you really a cat owner if you don't have cat hair on your um, material and your clothing and your bed? Um, I know I did this part since. I've added a lot of back stitching in. I gotta get started on, there's a tree over here, but this tree right here was not easy. So I'm kind of hoping that the other tree is a little easier. But still working on Victorian shops. Charles Wysocki. I love all his stuff. Okay, and then the last whip is Nova by Jenny Morrow Designs. It's going to be gorgeous. Now, I absolutely will pay for this to be framed uh, when I finally finish it. I'm on square 37 right here so far. So 18 squares, 18 12 by 12 squares on this row, 18 12 by 12 on this row, and I'm on number 37 12 by 12 square. using all DMC. This pattern uses a lot of the same floss colors over and over again, but you can have a lot of floss out at one time. And I have all my floss in plastic container, the little plastic um, floss containers. And so it's hard to have 36 floss bobbins out at one time. But um, I try to, when I know, it has a really cool chart that tells you when a color is used. So if I know that I'm finished with that color for the whole chart, I'm gonna put it back away. So it's hard having all those bobbins out at one time. But again, type A. So I manage, I managed to do that. But this is um, looking nice, I love it. A lot of different uh, stitches in this one. There are no plain, just plain cross stitch stitches in this. A lot of satin stitch, a lot of stitches that I've never done before, but so far, um, I'm, I'm, I'm conquering it. I'm, I'm proud of the progress that I've made. I do have one more thing to share, and if, if you do follow me on Instagram, you've seen it, but I was, um, have to show you, it's gorgeous. This is a Save the Stitches. I was shopping at a local antique market that we have here called the Copper Possum with my son Owen, and this sampler was there. Um, I think it was like marked 40% off or it ended up being $24.99 and there is absolutely no way that I could leave this sampler sitting on that sales floor in that booth. Um, so Martha Ann Kearney, 1980. You did a gorgeous job and I am so proud to be the owner of this sampler. Uh, I love it, everything about it. I only wish I could have stitched it, but I'm going to find a place in my home that is worthy of, it looks a little rough on the back end, but the front is gorgeous. And I know that it has, somebody loved it, and now we're gonna love it at our house. So I'm so proud to own this. It is just beautiful. I bought that at the Copper Possum in Milton, Florida. So if you know Martha Ann Kearney, 
you can't have it back. It's gorgeous. Um, I think that that's it. I have so many. We'll have 31 here. The only, I'm going to come back maybe sometime in May and talk about the progress I've made. I'm going to try to keep track on Instagram of all the new starts that I have every day in May. There's a lot of big projects in here. There's a Mother's Day pillow that I want to make my mother for Mother's Day. So I'm going to try to get that toward the beginning of May so that it is done. Uh, I'm going to check back after and let everybody know how I did. I would love to see your progress and what you're doing for Mania. Um, until next time, no promises when that'll be, but I'm going to be here dealing with this stuff and trying not to have a nervous breakdown. Until next time, see you later. Bye.